In this Blender tutorial you will learn three different techniques on how to use symmetry sculpting on a dynamic post asymmetrical creature. Enjoy! Hi everyone, Zach here, thanks for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, here I share the best tips and tricks to boost your Blender 3D skills and create beautiful 3D art. One thing I really love doing is digital sculpting in Blender, creating creatures and characters. And just recently I started to create a dragon. As you can see, this is still work in progress, it's not finished yet, there are still a lot of details missing. And this is actually a collaboration project with Danny over at the YouTube channel 3D Printed Tabletop. So if you are interested in 3D printing, definitely check out his channel and he's also a really nice guy. And he's starting a kickstart campaign next month in September, where you want to kickstart some 3D dragons, which you then can download and 3D print at home. And yeah, I'm creating one of those dragons, which is pretty cool. And I wanted to create this dragon in a very dynamic pose, and I decided to start sculpting in a non-symmetrical way. That means basically I have to sculpt everything on one side and then sculpt everything on the other side. So I can't use the symmetry tools in Blender. But I've discovered some pretty cool techniques which basically allows me to use some kind of symmetry tools while sculpting this asymmetrical creature. And this is what I want to share with you in this video. Before we get started, if you're completely new to sculpting or want to bring your sculpting skills to the next level, then definitely check out my Mastering Sculpting course. There I cover everything you need to know about sculpting in Blender. There's a full chapter about all the sculpting tools in Blender, useful add-ons, workflows. Then there are two full sculpting exercises, one for beginner and one for advanced users. And then there's a bonus chapter about how to add some textures and shading to your sculpting and some nice lighting and how to render it out. So the whole package teaches you everything you need to know about sculpting in a very compressed way. So also, if you're interested in sculpting or creating creatures for 3D printing, this is definitely the course for you. If you want to learn more about this course, check out the link in the video description below. Also, if you sculpt a lot in Blender and want to learn all the shortcuts to speed up your sculpting process, download my free Blender Sculpting Sheet Sheet, link in the video description below. Alright guys, without further words, let's finally get started. So first of all, let's take a quick look at this dragon sculpting. As you can clearly see, this is not a finished model yet. There are still a lot of details missing, which I will do in the next days. And as soon as I have finished this, I will share this with you, maybe in a nice time lapse or so. Let's see. But it's also great to look at this model at the current state, because if I turn off the matcap, you can see all these parts with different colors are still separate. And this makes it much easier for me to change the pose over time. So while sculpting on this dragon, I maybe realize I want to change the rotation of the arm a bit. So let's, for example, take this one over here. And as you can see, each part of the arm is a separate object and they are parented to each other. That means if I rotate the upper arm here, you can see the lower arm or leg I'm not sure if this is leg or arm, but you can see that I can still move stuff around and change the pose completely. Certainly the transition between all these parts are not changing, but later on when we have sculpted all the details, then we can merge everything with a boolean operation and then we can also sculpt the transitions. And the second cool thing here is if I now switch to sculpt mode with dynamic topology on, let's quickly do some changes over here maybe something like this. And maybe let's take the snake hook brush and create some weird looking spikes. And if I now switch back to object mode, the magic happens. You can see everything I've done over here will be automatically mirrored on this object, although it has a completely different position. And this is because these two objects are linked to each other. So on the second thing I will show you a bit later in this video is how to change the mirroring axis on objects like the body here, where we have a lot of bending and so on, so that I can, for example, just sculpt here and have the symmetry working on the other side. So now let's take a look how I created these limbs. So here I have a simple cube. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier with a few subdivisions. And in edit mode, I can stretch this a bit, make this a bit smaller, maybe add some loop cuts, 
to define the very, very basic shape of, for example, an upper leg or arm. So if I now switch back to object mode, you can see the rotation axis is around the origin of the object. And certainly the joints of a leg or arm is on a different position. So let's switch back to edit mode, select everything and move this over here. You can see if I'm now moving everything around in edit mode, the origin stays where it is. So I can basically change the position of the origin by moving the geometry around. So if I now switch back to object mode, you can see if I now press R for rotation, we have this new orientation axis. So now let's duplicate this, move it over here. Maybe change the shape a bit because the upper leg and the lower leg are certainly looking a bit different. And let's do it once again for the foot, for example. So this is now my weird looking leg or arm or whatever this should be. And yeah, now I want to pose this, but if I move one object around, you can see the others are just staying where they are. So we have to connect all these parts together and this we can do using a parent. That means I select the foot at first, then with shift the lower leg, press control P and set parent to object. That means this object is now moving along with this object. Let's do the same thing with this over to this. So we select this one and then with shift this one, control P, set parent to object. And up here in the outliner, you can also see it pretty well. This foot here is inside this object and this object here is inside this one. And if I now move this stuff around, we can change the pose. So now let's move this over here a bit. Let's add a second cube subdivision surface modifier on it. And this should be the base mesh for our body. Some weird looking shape. Okay, now I want to create the leg on the other side. Before I do this, I apply all the modifiers. This step is important that you do it before you duplicate the leg later on. Because when we move over to sculpting, we need all the modifiers applied so we can use this resolution for sculpting. So this is important because if you duplicate the leg later on and then want to apply the modifiers, this will not work. To duplicate this to the other side, I select all the parts here and instead of Shift D, I press Alt D. Move it over here. That means I have created a linked duplicate. That means everything I do on one object will be mirrored on the other object as well. So let's do a simple change here with proportional editing. I bend this a bit so we can also see the mirroring later on a bit better. And now you can see everything is also happening on the other side, but these are still exactly the same legs in terms of position or rotation. So we need to mirror this leg here. Down here, let's switch to the local transform orientation so we can see the local axis of each object. So you can see the X axis is now pointing in this direction and same thing over here. So to mirror this, we select all the parts, press Ctrl M and then press X. That means we will mirror this in the local X axis. So if I now click on this, you can see the X axis is now pointing in the other direction, but still they are connected using the linked mesh. So if I move it over here and now start, for example, sculpting on this one, let's enable dynamic topology, disable symmetry, and let's use constant detail and a few more details. And if I now start sculpting as shown before and move over, everything will be mirrored to the other side. So let's imagine we have now sculpted all the nice details we want to have on the objects. So I can also add some details on this leg, for example, something like this. And you can see it's also mirrored to the other side. Now let's change the pose a bit because that's the reason why we are doing this in this way. And now I want to merge everything to yeah, create the nice looking transitions. And this I can do using the bool tools. This is a free add on. It's shipped with Blender. You just have to enable this in the user preferences under add ons. Just search for bool and enable this bool tool, save the user settings. And now I can just select different objects and merge them together. So I select these two objects and then under auto boolean, I click on union. Same thing I do with this two union, then over here, union, union. 
And then I still have to apply the subset modifier over here and then select everything and click on union. Now this is one big mesh. And now if I quickly switch to wireframe mode, you can see these objects are really cut into each other. So there's nothing sticking in each other. And this is perfect for sculpting with dynamic topology. If I now switch over to sculpt mode, enable dynamic topology, I can sculpt over these edges using the clay strips brush, for example, and then with shift, I can smooth this using the smooth brush. And this way you can easily yeah, make beautiful transitions here. So in this way you can sculpt basically with mirrored limbs and keep them separated as long as you can or as long as possible so that you have all the nice details. And then at the end of your sculpting process, join those parts and make some adjustments on both sides. Certainly then the mirroring function will not work anymore. So now let's take a look at the dragon again, because now I want to show you a second thing you can use to mirror your sculpting. Because right now, if I take a look on this model, the origin of the object is over here somewhere. And in sculpt mode, it will always take this origin and the orientation of the origin to define the symmetry axis. So if I switch to sculpt mode and enable symmetry, and if I now start to sculpt on one side, you can see nothing really is happening on the other side. Or maybe the mirroring function is somewhere else, so we can't really see it or it's completely different placed. So what we have to do basically in object mode is to change the origin of the object. But as you remember, it's a bit hard to do it in edit mode because the mesh here is now super dense and I don't recommend to switch to edit mode with such a dense model because Blender might crash then. So we have to use a workaround. So let's create a cube, for example, switch to edit mode and delete all the vertices. So we have nothing in there. So we just have this empty axis basically. To see the orientation of the axis better, I go to object, display and enable axis. So we can see the axis of this object. Then down here, we can enable the snapping option so that we can snap one object to another. But I won't enable this button here because I can do it temporarily by pressing control. But on the right here, I enable face as snap element. And over here, I enable these two buttons so the object is rotating according to the surface. So let's imagine I now want to sculpt over here so that it is mirrored on both sides. So what I do is I duplicate this, Shift D, hold down Control after pressing G for moving this around. And now, as you can see, by pressing Control with the snapping option, it will snap to the surface. So I have a basic position for this object. Now press R for rotation and R again. You can also press double R to have this three-dimensional rotation basically. And then change it in a way that it is defining the mirroring axis. So this might be a bit tricky, but when you've done this, select the body, then this thing here and press control J to join this. And since there is no mesh in here, it's happening super fast. You can disable the axis now for this object. And now the origin has changed to this position and this is the Y axis. And if I now switch to sculpt mode, Y mirroring is enabled. Let's enable Din Topo. And now, as you can see, it's mirroring on both sides. Certainly both sides are not completely the same at the moment. So in mind that both sides look a bit different. But it, I think it helps a lot to define, especially some of the details here. And certainly if you're now changing to a completely different position here, you have to make the same process again. Switch to object mode, shift D, move it over here. I mean, it, it's not the best workflow ever, but it works because we don't have another option. Would be cool if we would have something like a dynamic origin or dynamic mirroring access for sculpt mode. But yeah, maybe this is a feature the developers can add somehow later on. Let's join this again. So this time it's the X axis. So if I now start sculpting over here, as you can see, it works. So here the orientation was not perfect. So not all the details are 
a mirror to the other side. But I think especially if you are just creating the finer details, this can save you a lot of time if you place this origin to the right position and rotation. So and the last thing I want to show you is, for example, if we take a look on the head here, this has a perfect orientation. That means if I sculpt stuff on the one side, it will automatically mirror to the other side if we have the symmetry option on in sculpt mode. But what if I want to add a horn here, a separate object that should use the exact same axis from this object. So I can use, for example, the mirror modifier to mirror this to the other side. And this is pretty simple. So let's add a new cube here with control three. Let's add a subsurf modifier with three subdivisions. In edit mode, let's quickly change the shape of this object. And now we need to copy this location and rotation to this object. And in order to do this, we select the horn and then with shift the head, press N. And in the transform panel, we can now copy all this info, the rotation and location to this horn. So right click on rotation, copy all to select it. And same thing for the location, copy all to select it. And now you can see this horn has the perfect rotation and position. Now let's select this again, switch to edit mode, change the scale and the position. So if I change the position in edit mode, as mentioned earlier, I'm not changing the origin and the rotation of this object. And now I can easily add, for example, a mirror modifier, and this is mirrored to the other side if I choose the right axis down here. And in this way, I can easily create this mirrored objects. And if I now apply all the modifiers, switch to sculpt mode, enable symmetry for the Y axis. And if I now start sculpting over here, you can see this will mirror to the other side perfectly. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and the tricks I just showed you. Let me know in the comment section below which of the three tricks you definitely will try out in future projects. And if you have any questions, just ask in the comment section. We can connect there. And there you can also connect with the other awesome people from the Blender community. So definitely leave a comment below. Also, I just reopened my Patreon account. That means if you really enjoy my content and want to make sure that I go on with this for a long time, you can support me over there. Link in the video description. And certainly subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Hit the bell icon if you want to get notified. Like this video and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot for watching guys. See you in the next video. Goodbye.